quality assurance and quality improvement. So, why reflect? Well, Rothy Balance and the Malt House 2009 state that it's important to reflect in order to improve teaching practice, to learn from your mistakes, to enhance your problem solving and critical thinking skills, to make decisions, to become more organised, to manage personal change, to acknowledge your values and to take your own advice. As teachers, it's good practice to reflect on what we do and how we do it, as then we can examine our strengths and also focus on our areas for development. By highlighting our areas for development, um, it means that we can create action plans from this, which hopefully can then lead to improved learning experiences for our students. Reflective practice should happen in action during lessons, after lessons and during planning. So action planning and putting it into practice of these ideas is really vital in order to make sure that we are improving the quality of our lessons in a long way. The concept of reflective practice has really taken off in recent years and that's because there have been many proven benefits. The primary benefit of reflective practice is for teachers and that is a deeper understanding of their own teaching style and which ultimately leads to becoming a, great, a, a more effective teacher. Research on effective teaching over the past two decades has shown that effective practice is linked to reflection and continuous professional growth. Reflective practice also helps us to become critical thinkers and to affirm our personal values and beliefs as a teacher. Reflective practice can be a beneficial form of professional development at both the pre-service and in-service levels of teaching. By gaining a better understanding of their own individual teaching styles uh, through reflective practice, teachers can improve their effectiveness in the classroom. Students also benefit from reflective practice. As teachers, we have a responsibility to provide a high quality education. We do this by using reflection as a tool to ensure that we are doing the best we can for our students. What works for one student or class may not work with another. So reflecting on our teaching can not only help us to identify effective methods and approaches, but also see why one approach is, better, uh, is more effective than another. Reflective practice is also very useful for management and other stakeholders. Quality assurance and improvement are key to good management, and we teachers are accountable to our managers and to the college as a whole. Reflective practice helps to ensure that we meet the high standards expected of us and work to see how we can improve further. Management can then relate these findings to demonstrate quality assurance to other stakeholders, such as potential students, Ofsted, the government, and so on. I'm going to be talking about the links to uh, quality and accountability. Each teacher has a responsibility as a professional in charge of the education of others to try to ensure they're doing their best for each student as an individual and to make their learning experience as effective as it can possibly be in any given situation. As each student differs from the other, and therefore every class differs from every other, it's not an easy task to accomplish. Individual needs should be considered and differing approaches to teaching, classroom management, resourcing, questioning methods, etc. will need to be adopted. Reflecting on practice to take account of differing methods is, therefore, a helpful endeavour when used to take account of what works in some situations as well as what does not, and the reasons this is so. Management from each department will want to implement quality assurance and improvement, as they are accountable to the college for the maintenance of past and grade levels. As a result of this, each teacher is accountable to their manager and to the college, to ensure that these levels are retained and improved upon where possible. In fact, reflective practice, along with the results, is the main tool that the education system has to demonstrate quality assurance to the stakeholders. This is our little model of um, direct accountability, quality assurance. Um, other methods, other method, uh, models of reflection include Donald Shearn's reflective practice model, David Cole's experiential learning cycle, Gibbs reflective cycle, and Rolf Bale's framework for reflective practice. I'm sure I don't need to say too much more about that. As discussed earlier, there are many benefits gained through reflective practice, but as with everything in life, there are issues that can't be ignored. Okay, the primary issue is that of uh, 
um, insufficient time or in inadequate preparation. Having to do a written reflection after every lesson is very time consuming and practically impossible for the majority of teachers and even trainee teachers ourselves with academic pressures. This issue, this issue also links in with the idea of external demands and pressures placed on teachers and trainees. Rather than engaging in a self-critical exploration of behavior and action, the student teacher uh, within a setting of grades and credits may be tempted to please the teacher, bringing into question the authenticity of the reflection. Another issue is that of teachers often having entrenched patterns of thinking and teaching, i.e. some teachers who are fixed in their approach to teaching may not engage well with the practice of reflection. Teachers also have inadequate support. As trainee teachers, we receive a lot of support and advice on how to reflect and act on our findings. But in the real world, teachers have very little or no support or encouragement to, pra to practice reflection, uh, reflection effectively. Finally, a lack of confidence or self-esteem and a fear of failure can lead to teachers to be become unlikely to want to participate in reflective practice. Reflection is a very personal act and teachers can often find it difficult to criticise themselves. As students and staff at Bradford College, it's important for us to be able to put these issues of reflective practice into context. Um, as Yasmin was saying, uh, time constraints are a massive barrier to teachers being able to practice, practice reflectively. Uh, reducing paid hours for teachers outside the classroom um, is some, uh, something that's going to be happening quite soon to a lot of people who are working at Bradford College. Um, they're talking about adding one or two weeks at the end of term um, for teachers to do planning and CPD. Is this when they're supposed to do their reflective practice as well? Is there going to be time for them to do that? Uh, is it actually viable for people to reflect on a whole year's worth of work? I don't think that's what's meant by all of the models. Uh, part of the IQER, Integrated Quality Enhancement Review for Bradford College, includes implement, implementing action sets to support and encourage reflective practice. Teachers are largely unaware of this measure. There's no time, encouragement given to staff to this end, nor any method or provision for promoting, for example, pro forma or Moodle space. For years, there's been space provided on Bradford College lesson plans to write what went well in the session and what did not. However, this is an unconvincing attempt which encourages only what it says and no reflection on those points thereafter. The review stated 2010. Recently I received an email stating that four communities of practice are now in effect. There's no further information on the matter. Who's doing it or how I can get involved, etc. Talking to staff around the college, it's clear they're not expected to carry out reflection in their practice at any specific or given time, although it's generally thought of as a positive and necessary part of their job by themselves as well as department managers. Students have also been asked to fill out forms at the end of modules and courses to provide feedback. Personally, I've never been given any of the results of these forms from my classes, so how can it be reflected? We're going to talk about alternatives and potential solutions to the issues that we have discussed. Okay, So as a group, we have discussed this and we decided that if we were to give teachers a lot of time, perhaps every week, to um, where they can specifically reflect on the week's lessons, that would mean that um, they don't have to wait till the end of the year, to this two weeks at the end of the year, reflecting on all of the lessons that they've taught up until that point. It would mean that the reflection and evaluation is meaningful and it would mean that the action points would be um, put into practice as the weeks um, happen. Okay, so uh, research suggests that reflection is most effective when shared with others, so we propose encouraging more communities of practice. Now, they, these can either happen um, in person, perhaps on tap days, um, in sessions organised uh, every couple of weeks, or perhaps once a month, um, or perhaps online in, in a forum where teachers can share experiences and offer advice to one another. Um, also, with regards to students giving feedback um, to teachers, we thought that they need to be well supported in this process and to understand the impact and the implications um, that what, of what they, um, what they say will actually have on um, the teachers themselves. Um, also, we need to make sure that we receive this feedback that they um, give us. Um, managers need to make sure that 
we um, have that so that we know what they enjoyed about the course so we can keep that for next year and also what they didn't enjoy and perhaps what they found difficult. Okay, thank you very much for listening. Bye.